Who's the sexiest character in One Piece? And why is it Shanks? Now that's not a thirsty comment from yours truly, but a truly objective assessment of red hair Shanks. An assessment that is actually based on an Oxford language's dictionary definition of sexy, which can mean sexually attractive, but also very exciting or appealing, which I'm sure we all agree is very true on both accounts. Especially because it's hard to deny. There are very, very, very few characters that get One Piece fans more hyped than Shanks, despite the enigmatic figure only appearing every once in a blue moon throughout the over 25 years of serialization, Shanks has remained one of the most popular characters in the entire series, consistently ranking within or very close to the top 10 in every character popularity poll. Or perhaps it's the fact that he is such an enigma that makes him as popular as he is. In 2007, Oda held a poll where he announced that he would draw a story for the character most voted for, and lo and behold, Shanks was the character that most people wanted wanted a story about, suggesting it is the lack of details that we know about him that makes him such an appealing and attractive pull. It's probably not a stretch to say that the success of the One Piece film, Film Red, which was the number one highest grossing film of 2022 in Japan, is largely owed to the fact that it was heavily marketed on the basis it would feature Shanks. And I get the feeling that fans aren't the only ones that view Shanks to be a sexy individual. In fact, I know for a fact that the series creator himself is very much enamored with the red-haired Yonko, once stating in an SBS that because of his clever mind, cool and calm personality, and standout attire, Shanks is the character that most resembles Oda himself. And while the answer seems to have been a joke, the response does demonstrate that Oda thinks Shanks is the coolest, most attractive character that everyone probably wishes to resemble the most. But not only fans, and the mangaka himself recognize Shanks, but I also get the distinct feeling feeling that many of the characters themselves have also fallen for Shanks' charm. Why do I say this? Because I suspect that Shanks has been sailing the seas, spreading goodwill, but also spreading seeds. And while One Piece is full of deadbeat dads, a classic feature of any good shonen manga, Shanks may just take the cake with not just one, not two, not three or four, but five potential children roaming the earth, abandoned and fatherless, while he's off doing much more important things things like being a role model to someone else's child. What? Now to be fair, this may be Shanks' own way of figuring out his daddy issues because as we now know, Shanks was also the victim of abandonment as a baby, being left alone in a treasure chest where he could have died if not for Goldie Roger who heard his cries coming from the loot that they stole from God Valley only to find a one-year-old Shanks to his and the crew's surprise. And although Roger seems to have served as a good father figure for Shanks, Shanks experienced further heartbreak break when his idol passed while Shanks was still a young boy. But we're getting off topic now, and while we can't empathize with any unresolved trauma on Shanks' part, the point of this video is to consider how many poor souls he's inflicting that same pain to now in his own life as a father. Because we're going to discuss just how many children does Shanks actually have. And the first on this list is Uta. Uta is the adoptive daughter of red hair Shanks and the only child on this list who is confirmed to be Shanks' child. While predominantly created for One Piece film Film Red, Uta is still a canon character, even making her way into the main series in a couple chapters. The way in which she became Shanks' child is very similar to how Shanks himself was found. The red hair pirates encountered a pirate crew that had attacked Uta's hometown that resulted in her parents' death while she was still just a baby. After claiming that crew's treasures, Shanks discovered a two-year-old girl in one of the treasure chests, much like how he was found. Recognizing this fateful encounter as being very similar to how Roger discovered himself, Shanks decided to raise Uta as his own. Uta would eventually join the Red Hair Pirates, becoming the crew's official musician, and was even allowed to join them on their adventures at sea, even when Luffy was not. Mistake number one, because this was a very bad decision on Shanks' part. A life of piracy is no suitable place for a kid. Indeed, on one of their adventures, the Red Hair Pirates' journey to Elegia proved fatal when the Demon Tot Musica was released during Uta singing, destroying the island and most of the population. Wanting to spare her from the guilt of knowing what happened, Shanks took the blame for what happened in the eyes of the public while he left Uta behind on the island so that she could develop her skills as a singer further under Elegir's king, Gordon. Mistake number two. But let's just say that Shanks really did drop the ball when it came to Uta. Shanks made a number of bad decisions when it came to raising Uta that we would have to say more or less ended 
ended in a tragedy. So maybe he learned his lesson and realized that raising a child is a whole lot harder than bringing one into this world. Which is maybe why from that point forth, Shanks has just decided to skip that part entirely. Because at least Uta had some contact with Shanks. The two actually having spent some happy years together. Which is a whole lot more than what some of the other characters would have to say. So moving on to the next child. And from here on out, we're turning into an episode of Mori Povich. Because I did say that Uta was the only confirmed child of Shanks. But each of these potential Shanks spawns have some pretty compelling arguments as to whether or not they are the child of the legendary Yonko Red Hair Shanks. And so next on our list is a similarly redhead Captain Eustace Kid. This is a fan theory that has been around for quite some time now. I don't know exactly when this speculation spawns, but I imagine one of the reasons was due to the fact that both of these characters have bright fiery red hair. And while it's easy to scoff and say, that's just a coincidence. It wouldn't be the first time that Oda has used the same hair color as a clue that two characters are actually biologically related. As we saw in the case of Tama and Orochi, both being part of the Kurozumi family. On top of their shared red hair, however, Shanks and Kid actually also share some other physical features, such as the fact that both of them lost their arms and both have scars that pass through their left eyes. Neither of these facts can really be said to be hereditary traits that get passed down through the generations of different biologically related families. Unless there's some sort of shared genetic that makes this family more prone to getting injuries on the left side of their bodies. But then there's also the fact that pretty soon after the time skid, when we saw Kid, he was pretty determined that Red Hair Shanks would be his Yonko target as his ticket to infamy. With Oda not revealing why Kid decided that Shanks should be his target, some fans seem to have come to the conclusion that this decision was a lot more personal than we realized. That this was Kid's way of getting back at his deadbeat dad. See what I said about the cycle of trauma? And while this is a very fun idea, especially given recent events where Shanks has pretty much wiped the floor with Kid and taken care of his crew, blasting them off the face of the planet, meaning that we may have witnessed one of the most intense family drama on One Piece, where Shanks effectively got to live out every parent's dream of not just whooping Kid's ass for being so arrogant, but getting to say smugly, you don't understand the world, kid. I'm more experienced than you. Which is actually another good point. Because although Shanks is obviously so much stronger than Kid, Kid does possess Conqueror's Haki. And so perhaps with experience, Kid could one day hypothetically reach where Shanks is at now. Now, Conqueror's Haki isn't confirmed to be genetic, but it would actually make more sense if Kid does have some sort of genetic predisposition and his relationship to Shanks is what thus gives him the potential to be a conqueror, even if he hasn't quite lived up to it yet. And maybe we could just blame his unresolved father issues for holding him back. Now I'm sure that people will be quick to counter argue and say that Shanks is from the West Blue and Kid is from the South. But this doesn't mean that Shanks couldn't have fathered a child while spending some time in the South Blue. In fact, that's the whole point of this video. Shanks has been journeying the world, leaving children in his wake in all the four corners of the sea. Maybe Shanks was inspired by one of Roger's final profound moments. <laughs> <laughs> and on the topic of Roger, if Shanks is really Kid's father, he would have had to have been 16 when Kid was born, which is admittedly quite young, but we could always turn this Mori Povich episode into 16 and pregnant. And Shanks being 16 would actually make a lot of sense, where after witnessing his adoptive father's execution at the ripe young age of 15, Shanks rejected Buggy's offer to become the captain of their own crew to claim the One Piece for himself, choosing instead to seek comfort for his heartbreak and loss elsewhere, traveling the seas in search of a nice woman to give him peace. Where ironically, it was the gang-ridden, violent South Blue that he found said woman, and voila, we have Kid. And if this story was all true, and Kid was really Shanks's child, then the tragedy that has been Captain Eustace Kid's life just got even sadder. So moving on to Shanks's next child, our beloved straw hat navigator, Nami.
We know that despite it being short-lived, up until Arlong's interruption, Nami had one of the best childhood experiences thanks to her mother, Belmare. But we also know that Belmare was Nami's adoptive mom, and the two, along with her sister, Nojiko, were not biologically related. Nami was an orphan that Belmare came upon and decided to adopt both Nami and Nojiko to protect them from the world's evil pirates, leaving her life as a marine behind. But what if Nami's own biological father was said evil pirate? Not necessarily evil in the same way that Arlong is evil, but at least evil in the sense that he left Nami behind unprotected. One of Nami's most defining characteristics is her bright orange hair, similar to how Shanks is known for his red locks. And while red and orange aren't quite the same, orange is a color that could derive from red, say if red was mixed with a lighter color, like yellow or blonde. Meaning that if Shanks' baby mama had blonde hair, the two could theoretically bring about a baby with bright orange hair. There's also the fact that Oda has revealed that if Nami was from the real world, she would be from Sweden, and her original design was quite obviously Nordic inspired, both of which fits very well with the Nordic Vikings theme that underpins Shanks and the red hair pirates. In terms of age, it's a lot more plausible than when we were considering Shanks to be kid's father, because Shanks would have at least been around 19 when Nami was born, which admittedly is still quite young, but not so young that you'd call Shanks a kid himself. Digging even deeper, Nami's obsession with money may not just be due to her experiences as a child, but biologically ingrained where Nami is in fact a Figurland family member, and therefore noble by blood. Because we now pretty much know that Shanks is a figure land and somehow related to the head of the gods knights that reside at Marijoire. And while I let that wild thought marinate for a little bit, we have also seen a recent trend with the Straw Hat members, or at least two of them so far, are getting extensions of their flashbacks to reveal even more about their pasts and backstories than we were first introduced to. We saw it happen with Sanji and again with Zoro. So maybe Nami is next and we'll see that before Belmare was Shanks, a mean old Shanks who left poor Nami behind. But we're gonna move right along to the next potential child, Makino's baby. We saw that since the time skip, Makino had a little boy and his fans went wild guessing who the father was. One name that kept popping up was Shanks. We all know that Shanks spent some time in Fusha village back in the day. Was the riz that he displayed over 10 years ago enough to keep Makino interested when he potentially returned? Did Shanks swoop in during the time skip knowing Makino was vulnerable after Ace's death. Dick. Because to be honest, there doesn't seem to be any real connections or reasons as to why Shanks would be the father of Makino's baby. Maybe apart from the fact that Shanks just oozes charisma that he just seems like a very natural answer. But we have no indication that Shanks actually went back to the East Blue during the time skip. We just know that he could have. Because why not? Sail the seas, spread some legs, spray those seeds. But something I want you to spread is spread the joy and spread the love by making sure to click subscribe so that we can expand the size of the Joy Fleet even faster than Shanks seems to be expanding his brood. To make matters worse, we got a tease from Oda when during an SBS, when asked who's the father of the baby, Oda replied, he's maybe that person. Yeah probably that person. And I am 100% certain that Oda has just introduced this baby character solely because he wants to get this sort of a reaction from us and he gets a kick out of fans shipping characters as opposed to this baby being actually relevant for this story. It has fans scrambling for any clue, any tidbit of information that could vaguely resemble a clue, such as when we saw Makino and her baby during the Egghead Island arc, where fans were very quick to notice the baby's very light colored hair, or should I say unshaded hair, suggesting it to be much lighter than Makino's black hair as per her color scheme in the manga and not the anime, and also lighter than Ace's black hair. Kurtgas the Ace being the other favored candidate to be the baby's father, prompting questions like, maybe the baby's hair will be lighter because it's something of an in-between of Makino and Shanks, which doesn't actually make any sense because Shanks's hair is also shaded quite dark in the manga. But like I said, this mystery has people grasping. And on that note, the most curious of mysteries. Who is that giant child at Elbaf? And could that kid be another one of Shanks' children? Our introduction to the Elbaf inhabitants was sort of a parallel to the very first chapter when we basically saw in Shanks' company an Elbaf Luffy, 
and an Elbaf Makino. It was also, interestingly, a very rare, perhaps the first time we've seen a character outright comment on Shanks' sexiness. And you can't help but wonder, what was Oda's intention here? Is it just a cute little callback? Trying to show us that Shanks has this effect on everyone, no matter what sees, no matter what race. Is he introducing the idea of a parallel universe? Or is he really trying to drive home the point that Shanks is really fathering kids all around the world? Gotta make sure you leave a legacy, you know? If this situation at Elbaf is supposed to mirror Romance Dawn, then this giant kid wouldn't actually be biologically related to Shanks, much like Luffy isn't Shanks' child. And Shanks is just inspiring little boys wherever he goes. But if this really were Shanks' child, then we have a reverse Odin and Toki situation, where Shanks would have had a tall task ahead of him that night that the giant baby was created. <laughs> get it? But in all seriousness, that was a wild reveal for Oda to drop a nice little nod to Vicky the Viking, a TV series that served as a big inspiration for Oda in creating One Piece, which really has to make you wonder that this giant boy will be a much bigger deal in the story to come. But anyways, what do you think? Did any of these characters put up a good argument that they are indeed the blood relation of Akagami Shanks? Am I missing any other potential Shanks' children to further extend his family? Let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Thank you as always for listening to another one of my wild rambling thoughts. And thank you to our channel and Patreon members for your continued support. This is Joy Girl and I'll see you again soon.